Conan is the name of awesomeness. Just look at all the legendary Conans throughout history, each making an impact upon the world that should never be forgotten. However, there is one shirtless Conan that is perhaps more famous than all the rest. And of course, this is Conan the Barbarian. While Conan has been in countless movies and television shows throughout the years, the true story of Conan begins back in Weird Tales in 1932, where he fought a giant serpent and a frogman. Naturally, this sparked the Conan craze we all know and love today, which also leads us to our game today, Conan Chop Chop, a hack-and-slash roguelike game with enough adventure, humor, and addictive action to draw nearly all players in. So today, let's break down why Conan Chop Chop deserves to be in your collection of games. Before we dive too far into that, welcome to the Ogles channel. Thanks for watching today. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to click that subscribe button down below for your latest in gaming news, reviews, content, walkthroughs, things like that. But let's go ahead and get back into Conan Chop Chop. Conan Chop Chop starts off with the story of a wizard who is attempting to bring back the sorcerer Zaltatan to take over the world. Forgive me if I don't say it right, I don't see that kind of name very often. The spell doesn't go quite so perfect because he ends up looking like a giant pile of vomit, but you are then tasked with the mission to stop them and their evil minions to reclaim the world for the greater good before they can continue their mission. When you start the game, you get to choose from one of four characters, each with different abilities and fighting styles. Conan, who I played the majority of the game with, focuses on close combat melee. However, if you perform more distant arrow shooting, there are characters for you as well. You start off in a hub area where you can upgrade your shield, weapon, armor, charms, and abilities. And for the most part, all these upgrades are self-explanatory, except for the charms and the abilities. The charms allow you to have special powers like orbiting weapons, assistance like Rainbow Slime or Sir Cluxalot, and various buffs to your character. If you desire more charms to choose from, you can buy more options from the blacksmith in the town with all the jewels you've collected upon your journeys. The charms really do make a huge difference in your playthroughs. In addition to the helpful charms, the abilities are equally important and can be purchased by leveling up and give you more permanent buffs and powers to your character like special moves, more hearts, more power, and honestly it's a requirement inside the game. Once you've fully equipped your character, you're ready to start your journey. You have to go in order the four worlds and fight your way through the areas until you reach a dungeon, which will also include a boss. Each of the four worlds are very unique to each other. They have different enemies, different environmental hazards, and a different boss. As you fight your way through, you'll figure out the importance of parrying, using your shield, dashing, dropping bombs, and more, all while fighting with your melee attack. I say all this to let you know that it is not just a normal hack and slash game. There is so much more skill involved in getting good. You can have all the buffs, abilities, and charms that you want, but if you never learn the mechanics of the game, you're probably never going to find your way to victory. At the close of each of the four worlds, you do have to complete a boss battle, and while these are lengthy battles, they are a ton of fun. There are three stages to each fight, and at each stage, the boss learns new moves. Personally, I found the Arctic Viking to be the most challenging, but after enough tries, you learn each of their moves to breeze your way through fighting them. After each boss fight, you do get to go back to the hub world, where you can upgrade your equipment, buy health, and get prepared for the next area. After all four worlds are completed, you are then ready to head through the fortress gate and fight the final battles, including the little pile of vomit we saw at the beginning. And the pile of vomit actually spews more vomit. It's an interesting attack. The gameplay is really fun and feels very rewarding for all the upgrades that you can do to your character. Every time you have a game over, you know that the next time you're going to have new abilities, new charms, and new equipment options to keep the game fresh and to make you feel more powerful. This keeps pulling you back in to keep trying to fight your way to the end. I personally did nearly the entire game in co-op mode, and let me tell you, this game is one of those games that is a great co-op experience. You have to work together, communicate strategies, divide resources, and you end up feeling like a true team as you work your way through the worlds. The game can be fun in single player, but to me, this game shines brightest if you have at least one other person to play through the game with. It's also fun to have someone to share the little jokes with that the game puts forward. The game looks like cyanide and happiness and tries hard to keep you chuckling throughout. Whether it's with the witty dialogue or a rock formation shaped like an ass that continues to fart over the area, the game is littered with little jokes to keep the tone light. While there isn't much negative to bring up on the game, there are a few glitches that happen from time to time, especially in the online multiplayer side of things. Often things will happen where your summons will duplicate on one of the player's screens, or coins can't be collected on the other player's screens, or where invisible enemies you can't attack end up killing you due to not appearing on your screen correctly, but on the other players. For the most part, these glitches don't really affect the gameplay significantly, and you can easily overlook them as you play through, but I wouldn't be surprised if a patch is eventually released to fix these errors. 
Overall, Conan Chop Chop is a ton of fun to play through, and I would recommend it to anyone who enjoys the hack and slash roguelike games. It does everything right for its genre and brings plenty of new things to the table to make the game feel fresh and fun throughout the entire experience. Conan Chop Chop keeps the good name of Conan alive and can even be added into the Hall of Legendary Conans. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, check out my other review and game videos, and as always, go out there, find a great game to play, just simply have a great rest of the day.